This is Mel Owens, and you're watching Class Act Sports. I'm Jared Ginsberg from Class Act Sports. We're joined by former first round draft pick Mel Owens. Mel, thanks for taking the time to join us. What are you up to these days? Well, after I played, I went and, I went and got my uh, law degree, and now we're representing players uh, relative to their disabilities. Did you always know that you wanted to be an attorney representing players like yourself that were going to eventually be retired from the league? No. When did you, when did you, uh, when did you figure out that that was a passion of yours to protect the interests, of, the interests of the players like yourself that once played in the league? Well, once, once I retired, the, the injuries started to manifest themselves more and more. And when I went to law school, I didn't think I was going to do this. However, uh, when I got out of it, it was sort of fortuitous. Uh, I was hired by an insurance company, and they were doing some representation of the teams and their disabilities. Uh, and then eventually, I went and followed my, my passion, which was the representation of the players. Now, obviously, you have the protecting the best the interests of the players. What's your thought on are the injuries really increasing like they say that they are? What do you see going on with the league? Well, I wouldn't say they're increasing because the game itself is still played on, on the same field, same amount of players. Uh, of course, the players are bigger, stronger, faster now, but also the equipment has improved uh, better to protect the players. However, no matter what happens, it's going to be a collision sport. People are going to get injured. So I wouldn't say that there's more injuries, it's just more awareness of the injuries. As a former first round draft pick, what's your take on the rookie pay scale? A lot of people think it needs to be adjusted, as do I, uh, considering people coming into the league that haven't played it down, getting more than some of the veterans. What's your take on that? Well, I'm never a fan of capping someone's salary or someone's ability to make a living. However, the salary, salary cap has been good for a number of sports. Remember, it's not the players that are paying themselves, it's the owners. So they could not pay the player that much if they wanted to, but then I guess you'd fall into collusion. But nonetheless, if it's going to be good for the game and good for the uh, veterans, I'm all for it. However, I'm not in favor of a cap. In your opinion, what's going to be the biggest sticking point to work out the collective bargain agreement to avoid a holdout or a lockout for the 2011 NFL season? Well, the, the owners, they, they want to increase their revenue, obviously. Back in uh, a few years ago, they agreed to a billion dollars, basically, and that capped their front-end money. Now, the way to make it up, they want the players to take an 18% cut, or they want to extend the season by two games, which would you know, give them additional revenue. Obviously, there's going to be something there that's going to be the sticking point. However, the, the, the owners say that the players should share because of the additional cost and want to grow the game. But the players that are playing now won't be around to benefit from the sort of um, growing of the game later on that they probably took a pay cut for. So I believe there's going to be something worked out because I went through two strikes when I was a player, and the players always came. I don't see the players having the fortitude to go through a whole season because they're making a lot of money. Uh, back when I played, we, didn't, we weren't making a million dollars, but still, whatever we were making was a lot of money to us. And a lot of guys cross or put pressure on the, on the uh, uh, leadership to get a deal done. So I think a deal will be done before there's a strike. Now you're an LA guy. Is, the Los, An is Los Angeles ever gonna regain a, an NFL franchise? I believe the St. Louis franchise is going to move back to Los Angeles. Now, you think I'm crazy, remember you heard it here first, okay? So does that mean that St. Louis could potentially lose a franchise? What would that mean for someone like a Sam Bradford that would now have to transition over to the West Coast, hypothetically? Nothing. He's probably going to like it more or like it better because it's, it's warmer weather. Um, it would fit his uh, personal lifestyle, I believe. And, you know, teams move around all the time. Uh, St. Louis moved to Arizona. The L.A. moved to St. Louis. If they move back, it's no big deal. Mel, let me ask you a question. It's about 10 degrees outside in Dallas right now. Luckily for the players, there's a dome. What's your take on a cold-weather Super Bowl, which will eventually be in New York in a couple years? Well, I won't be there, okay? <laughs> However, I'm from Detroit. And in 2006, the Super Bowl was held in Detroit. 
It's a dome. And I went there because I'm from Michigan. Detroit put on an excellent Super Bowl, a great week. I woke up this morning in this 10 degree weather and I said, man, I'm glad I'm not playing. I personally wouldn't do it, okay? But New York is probably the only place that could pull it off because it's an attraction. If it was in Green Bay, you'd get like 12 people showing up. Last thing, uh, what, what was the highlight of your career in the NFL? Retiring. No, that's one of them. But, I, you know, I was always a Los Angeles Ram fan, even when I was a kid growing up in Detroit. So when I got drafted by the Rams, it was a dream come true. And I had the privilege to be drafted in the first round, another, first round, uh, another fantasy of mine. It's just been, uh, it's been wonderful. Um, and just playing with a lot of good players and then coming back to the Super Bowl and really, really being a part of it. You know, I never, I never went to a Super Bowl. We played in two NFC championships. But it, I, I just feel fortunate that I, I can call this work. You said fantasy. You mentioned the word fantasy. Do you think that fantasy football and the type of aspect of creating a fan atmosphere has helped the game grow? Absolutely. Now, I'm not a fantasy player. I've never played. I don't know the first thing about it. However, it really allowed the fan to be engaged with the players and the whole league aspect of it. And it lets them participate. It gets them involved in um, some of the content, the newspapers, the, the media, the internet websites. And it's a revenue generator as well. So I think it's really helped the, uh, the fan base of the NFL. And I think you can track it from when fantasy football became really viable. You see the NFL's popularity just skyrocket and take off. So I think it's a very uh, uh, intricate part of the game today. Super Bowl 45, thanks for stopping by. Green Bay Packers, Pittsburgh Steelers, who are you taking? I think Green Bay is, is better. However, I got a friend, Garrett Guimont, that works for the Steelers. So I'm going to pull for the Steelers to win, but I think Green Bay's better. But they're both, they're both good. You know, I want Pittsburgh to win now. And how can, the, uh, how can the players out there get a hold of Mel Owens? Well, they can email me at mowens at nbolaw.com. That's mowens, O-W-E-N-S, at nancybravooscarlaw.com. mowens at nbolaw.com. I'm Jared Ginsberg, live at the Ghost Bar in the W Hotel. We thank Mel Owens for taking the time to stop by. From Class Act Sports, it's a wrap.